All right, thank you. I should start by saying I feel um, almost a bit of a fraud stood here now because we've heard from a range of experts already today. Um, and I'm here to talk about a very different kind of science. I'm here to talk about political science and uh, the art, um, or the dark art, as some might call it, of lobbying and campaigning and what we do here at Target Ovarian Cancer. When people hear the term lobbying, they often think, and this is a generational shift perhaps, of either Sir Humphrey Appleby and uh, cosy glasses of whiskey with the right civil servant who went to the right school to get what you want done. Uh, or perhaps more recently, they might think of some of the, uh, the slightly more sinister manoeuvres that you'll see in the House of Cards. As always with these things, there's an element of truth in both, but this session is to give you a brief idea of the lobbying and the campaigning work that we do at Target of Erin Cancer, and most importantly, how you can get involved. So I thought it was worth by starting out to say why we campaign. Um, we've talked about some of the latest advances in diagnosing and treating ovarian cancer today, but we know there are already so many things that we could be doing that just aren't happening. We know that in an ideal world, all women are made aware of and know at least the main symptoms of ovarian cancer. They visit their GP as soon as they first experience any symptoms, and that GP immediately refers them for diagnostic tests. Again, in an ideal world, if diagnosed with ovarian cancer, a woman is introduced straight away to a clinical nurse specialist and she receives the best treatment um, that's available, including being referred for clinical trials when that's appropriate. And additionally, that where appropriate, all women at risk of the BRCA mutation are offered genetic testing and counselling. And finally, in an ideal world, all women have all the information and support they need, both during and after treatment. But as we all know, we don't live and operate in an ideal world. And this is the real world. We know that awareness of the symptoms of ovarian cancer remains stubbornly low. We know about 20% of women, one in five, can recognise the main symptom of bloating. Uh, those numbers drop to single digits when we start to talk about the other symptoms. We know it's taken too long for women to get a diagnosis. Um, I imagine if I did a quick show of hands right now, in fact, let's do a quick show of hands, of how many women had to visit their GP more than once uh, before they were referred for diagnostic tests. And our research tells us um, that I think just one in five women are receiving the diagnosis within a month of first going to see their GP. Clinical nurse specialists, amazing clinical nurse specialists, are not able to spend the time they want supporting women. Again, we know from our work with clinical nurse specialists that they're having more and more pressures placed on their time and in fact, only one in three tells us that they can spend the, all of the time they want supporting patients both during and after treatment. Whilst this improving, we know not all women are able to access clinical trials they'd like to take part in. And, and, and likewise, uh, as new drugs and new treatments become available, we know that it varies across the UK as to what women are able to access. And finally, we know that too many women are left feeling isolated and alone following their diagnosis and throughout treatment. So moving on to a bit about how we campaign, um, and I put this slide as identifying the problem. I'm not sure that quite covers it, but it's, uh, I always describe when you're campaigning, you have to make your case. You have to have the irrefutable evidence that when you see whether it's the MP, the minister, in the press, that no one can doubt what you're talking about and that you are the expert. So we have a wide range of cancer data. We have data on cancer survival rates. We have data on diagnostic tests, surgery, patient experience. Uh, we actually know that where we are here today, Birmingham, has some of the best five-year survival rates in the UK. Um, we get this data from a range of sources. We have cancer registries in every nation across the UK. Uh, we have Public Health England that collect a range of information, uh, including patient experience. The NHS itself, if we want to find out how long it's taken for diagnostic tests or how many tests have been commissioned, that data is all there. Um, and finally, the Office for National Statistics. So the information we need to campaign is there. But it's also important that we collect our own evidence. And uh, it's been touched on a couple of times already, but we're currently completing our third Pathfinder study. Pathfinder explores the knowledge and experience of women in the general population, and that's how we gauge awareness levels of the symptoms of ovarian cancer. Women with ovarian cancer, to find out your experiences and what you feel needs to change. 
GPs to find out what awareness levels are like and whether GPs know the correct referral pathway for women presenting with symptoms. Cl clinical nurse specialists to find out what their experiences are on the front line. And for the first time this year, we're doing a family and friends survey as well to find out what their experiences are supporting women with ovarian cancer and what support they're receiving. Uh, another first this year is we're hoping to publish reports and our findings for Pathfinder broken down by each of the nations in the UK. We know health's fully devolved, so we want to make sure our campaigning work and the information that we're providing to decision makers likewise reflects that. Um, and I suspect I'm talking to a largely England-based population today, but um, I would encourage everyone to take the Pathfinder survey, of which we have copies outside, um, and uh, to particularly encourage those living in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland to complete the survey as well, because we didn't need enough responses to be able to publish and share our findings. How we campaign, friends in high places, and I suppose this is touching on our Sir Humphrey Appleby type moment, um, but politicians and civil servants are crucial allies in helping secure things like awareness campaigns, uh, improved diagnostic pathways, and better services. And here's just a few of the things we've done. Um, we campaigned for um, and helped set up and now provide the secretariat to the all-party parliamentary group on ovarian cancer. Um, and whilst the heading's a bit of a mouthful, this is effectively a grouping of MPs and peers in Westminster, and they come together to find out more about ovarian cancer and what needs to change. And they then act as our champions in Parliament. Uh, most recently, uh, examples of some of their work is a lot of things they've done behind closed doors, lobbying around changing to cancer drugs fund. Um, put simply, they can get meetings and approach people that we can't. Um, so they're an incredibly important bunch of people to work with when we're trying to, trying to change things for the better. Uh, we've also started having regular meetings with the Minister for Public Health, and we do this with the other um, ovarian and gyneco gynaecological cancer charities because we think it's important that we come together and that we present a united front to decision makers. Um, the Minister for Public Health is not a particularly grand-sounding title, um, but Jane Ellison MP, she's responsible for cancer, She's an incredibly well-informed MP and minister, and I would say we're very lucky to have her. Um, and there's been a couple of incidents already where actually ovarian cancer is top of her list and she's acted or done something or committed to something. And just those regular meetings, that regular presence, uh, she knows about ovarian cancer, she knows about the charities, and that just helps us get things done. Um, and then finally, we run parliamentary campaigns. Um, last year, it's been again mentioned already, we launched our postcode lottery, the ovarian cancer postcode lottery campaign in Parliament. The purpose of the campaign was to, and we had a large number of new MPs, as you'll all remember last year, um, the purpose of the campaign was to help MPs understand the differences um, in ovarian cancer awareness, um, access to clinical trials and survival rates across the UK. Um, it was hugely successful. We had 80 MPs came to that parliamentary campaign launch. Now, that's 80 MPs that we know or people we can go back to, people we can remind. Oh, you remember, you know, we've got that photo of you when you came to a campaign launch. Would you mind putting down that question for us now or raising this with the minister? But what I should add is part of the reason that was so effective and the reason we got that many MPs was that over 500 of you wrote to your MP asking them to be there. And that has a huge impact. And I'd say one thing that's different, MPs get campaign letters all the time and uh, they get sort of the template, template letters that come in and it's very easy, they sit at the bottom of the list. One thing that's different about our campaigners is that everyone really cares and is really, really passionate about the issues they're raising. Mm -hmm. And just seeing the letters that went into MPs, I don't think there were any that hadn't been personalised or someone hadn't had a message as to why this matters to them. And in terms of getting MPs to understand ovarian cancer and why things need to change, that makes such a huge impact. So a huge thank you for, from us um, for everyone that did that and got their MP along. So I thought it was also worth saying the impact or the outcomes we then get from our campaigning work. Um, we've had a regional BKM Cancer Ovarian Cancer Awareness Pilot. Again, um, a bit of a mouthful, but um, these, they've been the BKM Cancer campaigns have run for, I guess, about the past five, six years now. Um, the national campaigns, you've probably all seen the, the lung cancer one in particular with the guy with the cough that won't go away. Um, and these are just national awareness campaigns which are meant to help people understand some of the key symptoms of cancer and get them going to their GP. Um, we've had a regional pilot so far. 
Um, we had some of the, um, we're still getting the findings from that coming through, but we had some good news yesterday at a conference where it showed the regional ovarian pilot has succeeded in getting more women in the target group to go and see their GP and discuss concerns about symptoms. We've also seen recently, and again, it's a bit of a mouthful, but <laughs> clinical commissioning policy on genetic testing um, and translating that into plain English. Uh, we've had guidelines for a while saying all women at risk of having the BRCA mutation should be offered genetic testing. We've had a lot of places have been doing that, but th in effect, there's been no formal system in place in NHS England for paying for that and saying how it should happen. And the clinical commissioning policy should deliver that. We've had a commitment and funding, in fact, you never just want a commitment for politicians, you want the hard cash, um, from the Department of Health. And they're now carrying out research into whether we can include information on ovarian cancer uh, with the negative sc screening results letters for, um, we've got the breast and cervical screening programmes, and whether there are any opportunities there to raise awareness of ovarian cancer with women going for screening. Um, and finally, uh, I, I mentioned briefly reforms of the Cancer Drugs Fund in England. Um, and we've just had word that measures are going to be put in place to help safeguard um, Avastin um, as those changes come into effect. Um, and again, uh, there's a huge thank you there because we were concerned with the Cancer Drugs Fund changes that uh, there's a group of drugs like Avastin which are approved for off-license use. And it's, it basically just means the Cancer Drugs Fund has a bit more flexibility than NICE in, in what it approves. And we were really worried as these changes came in what would happen to Avastin. And so again, we went out and said, look, please raise this with your MP. Um, Avastin is such a significant drug, we, we don't want to see it put at risk. Um, and 500 was impressive um, when we had the parliamentary campaign. This time, 600 people uh, wrote to their MP um, and asked them to raise it with the minister that they were concerned about what was going to happen with Avastin. Um, and as a consequence, the Department of Health and some um, <laughs> poor, poor suffering civil servant received a huge pile of letters from MPs um, but it breaks through. It means they have to come up with a formal response. They have to do something. Their MPs are asking what's going to happen. They're under pressure from constituents and they have to do something. So thank you again. Just setting the bar quite high. Next time we go out and say, can you help us with an issue? I'm expecting 700 emails to MPs. And finally, how you can get involved. Uh, so I should really start with uh, joining our campaigns network. <laughs> Um, and that's, uh, that's to start lobbying your MP. And if you want to sign up and that's not something you're doing already, we've got some sheets outside. Um, volunteering to speak to the media, it makes a huge difference when people hear someone's first-hand experience. Um, you know how it is when whether it's you're scanning the paper or you've got the TV on in the background and sort of the likes of me comes on and gives the official line. You think, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then someone comes on and talks about their experience and what it meant to them and suddenly you sit up and take notice. Um, and finally, taking part in Pathfinder 2016, we really, really, really need a huge number of responses to make Pathfinder a success. And so when we go to MPs and clinicians and others, we can say we really are representing all women with ovarian cancer. Um, so if you haven't already filled in the Pathfinder survey, we've got copies outside. Um, they are quite large. If you'd rather do it online, the web link's here. Um, if you go to our website, it's really easy to find. Um, but yeah, please, please do take the time to fill it in. Um, and it likewise, encourage anyone you know to do so as well. And that is it for me. So thank you very much for listening. <laughs>